It's Friday, May 22nd. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel and breaking news. A Pakistan International Airlines Airbus A320-200 has gone down off of the departure end of runway 25 right at Karachi International Airport, Pakistan. Here's what we know so far. From the Aviation Safety Database, the aircraft is an Airbus A320-214, serial number 2274. First flight was in 2017, 15 years ago, powered by the CFM-56 engines. Pakistan International Airlines Flight 8303 and Airbus A320 crashed on approach to Karachi International Airport, Pakistan. The airline stated there were 91 passengers on board and seven crew members. The flight departed Lahore at 13.05 local time and was expected to arrive at Karachi about 14.45 local, so about an hour and a half long flight. The aircraft was cleared to land on runway 25 left at Karachi. At 14.35 local, the crew radioed that they were going around and requested another ILS approach to runway 25 left. The controller instructed the flight to turn left, heading 110, and climb to 3,000 feet. I'll post a link to the ATC Live audio link. Hopefully our friend Victor at Vass Aviation will soon have an update putting all of this ATC audio tape together plus the radar returns. Listening to the ATC audio tape, it sounds to me like they were having trouble even reaching the 3,000 foot altitude. Four minutes later, the flight reported they had lost engine or lost engines. It's unclear again from the audio tape whether this was a single engine failure or a loss of both engines as reported by the pilot and subsequently declared a mayday. The controller cleared the flight to land and they were allowed to use either runway 25 left or right. The aircraft crashed in a residential area named the Model Colony about 16 about 1,360 meters off of the departure end of 25 right. The aircraft broke up and a large post-impact fire erupted. So why the aircraft went around is shaping up to be one of the strangest stories I've seen in an aircraft accident thanks to some sharp Pakistani plane spotters that provided us some photos. Let's go inside and take a look and see what happened potentially to this aircraft. Karachi is located here along the Gulf of Oman in Pakistan. The flight originated out of Lahore, about an hour and a half long flight. The weather at the time was good, no significant weather, light winds down the runway. And here's the vertical flight profile. Looks like they achieved an altitude of about 34,000 feet. Now let's take a closer look at this last portion of the vertical profile. On the ATC audio tape, you can hear the crew getting established for the ILS 25 left, and at the same time, you can also hear the gear warning ding, 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 ding going off during the radio transmission. At about 1434Z, you can see that the aircraft did a go around. According to eyewitnesses, the aircraft landed on its engines without the gear extended. And subsequently, went around after the engines made contact with the runway surface. This all needs to be confirmed. Now, it's been a few years since I've been in the Airbus. I've got a couple thousand hours in it, but let's do a couple quick systems review. This is what it sounds like when the gear is not down. When you go to lower the landing gear handle and the gear does not extend correctly, you'll hear a ding, ding, ding. It sounds like a door open light in your in your car. Let's check out this quick clip from Captain Joe on this very phenomenon. So let's imagine you were on approach and just extended the landing gear and this happens. The ECAM is requesting us to perform the landing gravity gear extension checklist. So you hear the ding, 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 ding. That's indicating you've got a gear unsafe situation. You've lowered the landing gear handle in the Airbus and the landing gear did not properly extend. Now let's hear a clip of the actual audio tape captured by ATC Live and recorded on Victor's VAS Aviation website. We are uh, comfortable. We can make it. We 
we are uh, comfortable now and uh, we are out of uh, 3500 for 3000 established i let 25 left sir uh, we are established on i let uh, 25 left did you hear the ding 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 of the gear on safe indication? This will be followed by a go around. Three, three, going around. So the aircraft went around, struggled to maintain 3,000 feet. It's unclear whether the aircraft came in for a second approach to 25 left or right, their choice, and then went around or if they lost control while maneuvering the aircraft. But there's another very important piece of evidence captured in this photograph. In this photograph, you can see that the ram air turbine, or the RAT, is extended. Here's the implications of what that means. The ram air turbine on the A320 extends automatically if in the event you lose both AC1 and AC2. In other words, if you lose both engines and both engine-driven generators, the RAT will automatically extend. The rack can also be manually extended by pushing a button up in the cockpit, but normally it automatically extends. So the implication of this means that at the time that this photograph was taken, it appears that both engines were failing. For a complete discussion on the rat, Again, turn to Captain Joe's video on this subject. But the basic idea is the A320 Airbus is a hydraulic and electric aircraft. You need the electrics to power the fly-by-wire flight control systems. The whole idea of having the emergency ram air turbine is to provide electrical power and hydraulic power, hydraulic power via the center or blue hydraulic system, as it's known in Airbus parlance. The landing gear is powered by the left or green hydraulic system in the Airbus, and the ram air turbine has little or nothing to do with the extension of the landing gear. The landing gear can be manually extended with the help of a hand crank located on the center console. One additional piece of evidence that indicates the engines were not producing much, if any, power on impact is this picture of the high bypass fan section showing little or no damage to the fan blades upon impact. So investigators should easily be able to get this all sorted out once they recover the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder to this aircraft. Somehow this crew managed to initially touch down without the landing gear extended, damage both engines severely, and yet somehow get this aircraft back up in the air, stagger around the pattern again, only to have those two engines subsequently fail due to the damage that they sustained upon the first go around without the landing gear extended. A very bizarre series of events. We'll keep you posted as we get more information. Please keep your comments below courteous, especially to all those that have lost their lives in this tragic accident. We'll keep you posted. Thanks for your support of this channel. See you here.